and welcome to this video on basic concepts of organic chemistry. This is for OCRA. Uh, my name is Chris Harris and I'm from Allery Chemistry um, or AlloryTutors.com. I've got two names. Um, basically, this video is just to go through an overview of OCRA um, of this particular topic, which is basic concepts of organic chemistry. So it's basically be used as a uh, revision um, tool. Um, these slides that I'm using here, you can get access to them, you can purchase them. Um, if you just click on the link in the description box and you'll be able to get a hold of them there. Um, but like I say, this is specifically linked to OCRA and it matches the specification points that are taken from the syllabus. So these are the specification points that we're going to look at in this video. Okay, so we're going to look at the types of formula. Um, there's quite a few of these, so you need to make sure you know what they look like and what they mean. So basically... Um, this is an algebraic formula. We're looking at the general formula first. An algebraic formula that can be applied to a chemicals in the family. So, for example, alkanes, alkenes, alcohols, etc. So, you can see here, these are general formulas. CnH2n plus 2, where n is just the number of carbons. Um, this is the general formula for alkanes. Alkenes with one double bond is CnH2n. Cycloalkanes also have this formula. Uh, alcohols, CnH2n plus 1, OH. So all these, basically, we can use these algebraic formulas to work out the formulas of any of these. Okay, so uh, molecular formula. So this is the actual number of atoms in a molecule or element. So, for example, ethane, C2H6. So this is probably what you'll see quite often. Okay, empirical formula is the simplest whole number ratio of atoms in a compound. So empirical formula, for example, ethane, uh, which is C2H6, that's the molecular formula. It's empirical formula, the simplest whole number ratio will be CH3. Now, don't be worried about, obviously, this doesn't look right, chemically right. Empirical formulas are just a whole number ratio. So don't worry if it looks a bit bizarre, a bit strange. Okay, structural formula. This is the arrangement of atoms in a molecule without showing all the bonds. Okay, so for example, uh, butan 1 all. So we've got CH3, CH2, 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 OH. So we've just chunked this molecule up. No bonds shown. That's an example for butan 1 all. So a lot of the time you'll see it as CH3, CH2, CH2, things like that. Okay, so skeletal formula, um, basically these show um, the bonds of the carbon skeleton only. Um, so hydrogen and carbon atoms are not shown, but the functional groups are. And they look a little bit like this. They look like zigzags. And you see these quite often because it's just quicker to draw them. So this is butan 1 all. You can see here we've got one, two, three, four carbons here. Um, this carbon and the end, each point represents a carbon. This carbon's got three hydrogens attached to it. This carbon's got two. This carbon's got two. That's got... Uh, two as well and then attached to it is an OH at the other side so this is an example of a carbon skeleton um, so yeah okay make sure you um, can draw these correctly and obviously each point is a carbon and displayed formula they basically these show the arrangement of uh, atoms showing all the bonds in an atom in a molecule so basically all your carbons, all your bonds, everything. So when it's asking for a displayed formula, make sure you draw it like this. So this is 2-chloropropane. Okay, so homologous series. And you might have seen this uh, before. The homologous series of a group of compounds have the same functional group and general formula. So what we're going to do is use the general formula to work out the molecular formula of a compound. So alkenes have the general formula CnH2n. Okay, where N is the number of carbon atoms. And the molecular formula of an alkene um, with 23 carbons is C23H2, lots of 23. And this is going to be C23H46. So this is just an example uh, of an alkene general formula. So successive members of the same homologous series increases by CH2. So each time we're increasing it by CH2. So the general formula of alcohols is CnH2n plus 1OH. Okay, and you can see here. So they've all got an OH, so they all belong to the same homologous series. However, the difference is we're just increasing it by CH2, as you can see in this example down at the bottom. Okay, so you need to know um, a few of these homologous series as well. So alkanes end in the word ane, and that would be an example is butane. Alkanes that are branched have alkyl in them. So for example, methyl, propane. It's got a methyl group hanging off a of propane there. 
alkenes end in ene, so that is propene, for example, which is this one here. Alcohols end in ol, ethanol. Okay, so always end in ol, and there, there's an example there. This is uh, ethanol here. Aldehydes end in al, so for example, propanal. Um, you can see here we've got this CHO at the end there. Ketones end in own, so there's propanone, CH3, CO, CH3. So you've got this very similar to an aldehyde. They have this C double bond O group. Aldehydes are at the end, ketones are in the middle. Carboxylic acids end in oic acid, for example, butanoic acid. So this is CH3, CH2, CH2, COH. This is butanoic acid. They always end in this COOH bit as well. Halogenoalkanes, these um, have a prefix. So these start as fluoro, chloro, bromo, iodo. So for example, bromoethane is CH3CH2Br and chloro would just be chloromethane, chloroethane, etc. Cycloalkanes, like we just mentioned before, these start with cyclo and end in ane. So for example, cyclopentane. So C5H10. And esters. These start with alkyl to start off with and end in anoate at the end. So for example, methyl ethanoate. And this will be an example here. Very similar to a carboxylic acid, except instead of the H, we have a um, an alkyl group hanging at the end of it. Okay, so we need to know about a little bit more about these carbon skeletons that we mentioned before. We need to know about the different types of them, okay? So there's two types of carbon skeleton. We've got aromatic and aliphatic, okay? And you've got very similar sounding words, uh, but you've got to know the difference. So let's have a look at these aromatics first. These contain a benzene ring, okay? And they may have functional groups and alkyl groups coming from them. So this is an example of an aromatic compound. They can either be just drawn, drawn like this or drawn like this. Aliphatic compounds, though, are straight chain. Um, so these are straight or branched. Um, they're not looped in a ring like this. So you can see here, butane is an example of an aliphatic. 2-methylbutane is an example of an aliphatic chain. So these are not in a circle like benzene. So alkyl groups are basically hydrocarbon branches, and these always have this general formula here, CnH2n plus 1, because one of the one of the spaces here has been used to bond with a carbon on the chain. Alicyclic compounds, um, these are basically rings that are not aromatic. So aromatics have um, three double bonds or a circle drawn in the middle. Alicyclics are basically aliphatic compounds, which is just a straight chain hydrocarbon, except they loop together to form cyclo compounds. So it's like cyclohexane. So these are not aromatic. Don't get these two confused. They look similar. But aromatics, remember, look for that circle in the middle. Okay, nomenclature. Now, this is probably one of the most important things you're ever going to do in organic chemistry is being able to name a molecule. So you really do need to know these rules. Okay, so molecules are named according to rules set down by IUPAC, which is the International Union of Pure and Applied Chemistry. Very catchy, isn't it? <laughs> okay, so this is the global language of chemistry. So the first thing we need to do is to find the length of the stem by counting the longest continuous chain of carbons. So you can see here that we've got all these different um, prefixes here. So the stem name. One is meth, two is eth, three is prop, four is bute, five is pent, six is hex, seven is hept, eight is oct, nine is non, ten is dec. Okay, so we're going to use some of these later on. Then if we look at this molecule as an example, the longest carbon chain here is four. So we're going to have bute as our stem name. Okay, so the functional group on the molecule um, normally tells you the ending of the name, which is the suffix. So in this case, this one has an OH on there. So this is going to end in ol. Okay, we've got two OHs on here. So this is going to end in ol. So this is a type of alcohol. Then the third thing we have to do is name a uh, number the carbon chain. So the functional group sits on the lowest possible number carbon. So in this example, obviously the functional groups can sit on the first carbon here, carbon number one. If I numbered it the other way, go one, two, three, four, then it means that the um, fourth carbon would have the two functional groups on, and that is obviously bigger than one. So we always know a number with the lowest number possible. Then number four, what we do is we make a note of the carbon number the OH is attached to. So this is carbon number one. Place this number before the suffix. Um, and this is a type of butan one ol This one, because we know it's bute, we know it's an alcohol, 
and we know that the alcohol is on the first carbon. So any side chains uh, and less important functional groups are written as prefixes in alphabetical order. See here we've got a, a side group here, a methyl group hanging off here, off the third carbon, carbon number three. And if there is more than one, or if there are more than one, identical functional groups either side, then we put di, tri, or tetra. And you can see here that we do have actually two alcohol groups. So we're going to have to put the word di in front of that to make it into two. So the name of this thing is called 3-methyl, because we've got a methyl group hanging off the third carbon. Uh, butan, because you've got four carbons in the chain here. 1-1-diol, one, one, because we've got two ols, alcohol groups here. And it's di, because you've got two of them. So it's diol. And 1-1 one, one tells us that both of these are sitting on the first carbon. So it's pretty much as simple as that. So make sure you know this nomenclature. It's so, so important. Okay, mechanisms. Obviously, in organic chemistry, we'll see a lot of mechanisms going on here. So basically, this just shows you the movement of electrons during a chemical reaction. So we can use curly arrows to show the movement of a pair of electrons. And so they always start from an area where there is loads of electrons, for example, a double bond or lone pair, and they end up moving the electrons to either form a new bond um, or you can use them to break a bond as well, actually. Um, you can use them moving electrons from a bond onto an atom, for example. Okay, uh, you'll see some free radical mechanisms as well, uh, but don't worry, you don't need to know the curly arrows for them, so they're a bit different in terms of their mechanism. Okay, so a mechanism showing how OH- reacts with bromoethane. Okay, so we're going to look at uh, see what this is. So here is our bromoethane here, one bromoethane. There is an OH- sign. I'm just going to show you basically how we can use these curly arrows to show how a reaction proceeds. So these electrons are going to move from these lone pairs here, and it's going to form a bond with carbon. This is what this arrow means, we're forming a bond with carbon. Uh, this one is basically showing the electrons breaking, this is what I was saying before, moving from a bond into the bromine. So this is the breaking of electrons. So remember, the arrow shows the direction of electrons. Loads of electrons in the bond move into the bromine. And this is going to form an alcohol in this case. Um, you can see here that the OH is now bonded to the carbon. There it is. But the bromine has been severed. The bond between the carbon and the bromine has now uh, broken. And we have bromide ions that are left behind. Um, so, yes. So, not too bad. Make sure you know what these arrows mean. Because you're going to see a lot of them in organic chemistry. Uh, right, bond fission. So, there's two types of bond fission that exist. We've got homolytic and heterolytic, and we need to know the difference between them, okay? So bond fission is the breaking of a covalent bond, okay? So the electron pair in the bond can be distributed in two ways. So we can have heterolytic and homolytic fission. So let's start with heterolytic. Basically, heterolytic is where the bond breaks, but the electrons are distributed unequally, okay, to form two different ions. So um, we get a cation, and an anion. So we've got double-headed arrow shows the movement of a pair of electrons. Hetero means different. So you can see here that we've got these lone pair, uh, well, this, sorry, bonding pair here. The electrons move onto one of the atoms. So what we're left with is that atom with a negative charge, and the one that's lost out on the electrons will have a positive charge. They are different ions, so that's why we say they are heterolytic fission. Homolytic fission is where the bond breaks with the pair of electrons in the bond being shared equally to form two uncharged radicals. So the dot means there's an unpaired electron on the atom. And again, homo means the same. So we've got the same products are being produced. So here we've got X and Y again with the lone pair, uh, sorry, with the bond pair in there. And basically what's going to happen is one electron is going to go on the Y, the other electron is going to go on the X. And so we've got two um, species, two radicals which are the same. Obviously, one's x dot, one's y dot. Okay, structural isomers. Uh, let's have a look at chain isomerism. Okay, so structural isomers. Basically, these have the um, molecular formula, the same molecular formula as each other, but they're different structural formulas. And we need to know the three main types. We've got chain, positional, and functional group. So, like I say, we're going to look at chain first. So, chain isomers have the same molecular formula but different arrangement of the carbon skeleton. Okay, so let's have a look. Pentane, here's an example, and 2-methylbutane. These are two isomers of each other. 
to count the number of carbons and hydrogens, they will be the same in each molecule. However, this one has got a different carbon arrangement in its skeleton, carbon skeleton arrangement. So you can see here we've got four here and a methyl group branching off the second carbon here. So this is two methyl butane, but the same molecular formula, different arrangement on the carbon skeleton. These are chain isomers of each other. Positional isomers, uh, these have the same molecular formula, but a different position of the functional group on the carbon skeleton. So um, this is obviously quite important um, because you're going to see a lot of these within uh, organic chemistry. So here's an example, pent and one all the alcohol group is obviously sitting on the first carbon and an isomer of that could be pentan 2 -ol. So pentan 2 -ol is um, an alcohol group now sitting on the second carbon. So this has changed its position. It's a positional isomer. Okay, functional group isomers. Uh, these have the same molecular formula but a different functional group. Okay, so these are a little bit trickier. So let's have a look at an example. This is pentwonine and you can see that we've got five carbons here. Okay, and 10 hydrogens. This is pent one and its functional group isomer. Basically, we want to try and remove that alkene, a molecule with the same number of carbons and hydrogens without the double bond, and that could be something like cyclopentane. You can see here it's got the same number of carbons and hydrogens as this, but there's no double bond, so the functional group has changed. So that is called these are functional group isomers of each other. And You've got to be careful when you draw an isomers. Um, you've got to make sure that you have actually drawn an isomer that is different to what you've done and not just a different shape. So the key point really is to find the longest continuous chain of carbons irrespective of the shape. Okay, it's the longest continuous chain that we're looking at. So we have a look at this one. This is pentane. So you've got five carbons um, and all, obviously all your hydrogens as well. So you've got 12 hydrogens here. Um, so look at this one. This one is still pentane. Look. It's just, yes, we've drawn it differently. It looks like a little bit like a zigzag, but the longest carbon chain is still five. One, two, three, four, five, okay? Longest continuous one is five. So actually both of these are still pentane, okay? So even though it looks different, it is actually just the same molecule. Okay, and so that's it. Um, that's a, just a quick overview of uh, basic concepts of organic chemistry. And like I said, this is for the OCRA specification. Um, please support this channel by clicking on the uh, link in the middle and you'll be able to subscribe and keep up to date with all the new videos that we upload. Uh, and just a reminder that you can purchase these um, slides. Just click on the link in the description box and you can get a hold of them there. Really great for things like revision and supplementing your notes, etc. Okay, that's it now. Bye-bye.